Alrighty. So, going ahead and getting started on our special Friday class today, where we're going to be working on a mixed media project. So, all right, so obviously we are already live, and I am assuming sound is good if people can hear me. And um, Joy's here. So, Joy will be helping to moderate. Welcome to everyone who's a regular, and welcome to those who may be new joining us today. So, um, we're going to have fun today. We're going to play. So, um,. As I've explained in some of my last um, recent shows, that we're going to be using my live shows for doing more um, playtime <laughs> um, kind of thing. Um, this one is probably going to end up needing a second class. We'll see how far we get, mainly because some of the stuff that we're going to be doing needs some drying time. And so as a result of that, it kind of extends the length of time. <coughs> excuse me needed <coughs> excuse me I've had just a tickle of a throat we've had a lot of wind blowing up around like here lately so anyway um so we may need some extra time and we may um I'll debate I think probably do it Sunday afternoon if we end up doing that second class but typically my live shows now are going to be where we're playing with techniques or quick projects that sort of thing so this is a special project that we put in for a um, mixed media reverse canvas that I did for um, uh, the Crafters Workshop. Um, I'm on their design team this year, and so um, I had an absolute blast doing this. And what I want to do is take some of the mystery out of mixed media. Even though for years on many of our projects, you may not have known you were doing mixed media, but you were. Because if we're using more than paper, we're using multiple types of media. And technically, that's mixed media. Um, so, But with this one, we've used, um, I used some stencils. We've used some die cuts. We've used some, some floral elements, some wire elements, some digitally printed elements that are on here uh, from some of my papers. Um, so we've got a lot of different things. We've used some sprays. We use some alcohol pens. We use some um, um, embossing. So all sorts of different um, products and things. We've also used some meso, meso some gesso and some mediums, um, some uh, paste, that sort of thing. So what I want to do is show you what to use, when to use it, how to use it, and that sort of thing with this and other upcoming projects. Um, I'm kind of thinking of these canvases, these reverse canvases, is I want to do a series of four of them. You know me, I like doing series. Um, with an autumn one, which we're going to do today, which is going to be slightly different colors and materials that are in this one, because um, I am going to be able to put together some kits for the one that we are doing um, today. And so I'm excited about that. The other thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to take a canvas and um, and this will be either via a video or during the next show where we're going to take our canvas and attach it or incorporate it into a box to hold a mini album because my projects tend to need a mini album to go with them. Um, and the mini album is one that we've already started. It's a double envelope. It's available here on YouTube um, that you can go ahead and get started with. I'm going to kind of restart the one off camera that we've already started that using the papers that I'm going to be using on the project today as we continue that one uh, potentially a little bit further down the road. Um, but um, like I said, I do have mixed media kits. I've explained it in one of my previous shows. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, now on my last show, I did go through all the materials that were in it. So it's a mixed media basic kit. So it includes the gessos, the mediums, um, the uh, modeling paste, um, what else does it have? Some of the, the waxes and other things that um, will be used commonly on many projects coming up. Um, and we use many of them on this project. Um, and then I I'll also go through um, here in a little bit just some of the other um, stuff that we will be using on this project specific. So I have the basics kits that can be used on multiple projects. 
and then I will have project specific kits that will be available that contain the specifics, the sprays, paints, that sort of thing that I'm using on the specific um, project so that you know you can get get those. Um, now the basic kit uses multiple, the project specific kit, it's also a great way to build up things like um, your sprays that can be used like watercolors um, and that sort of thing. So um, I do want to go ahead and get rolling on showing you what we're going to be using um, today because it's always a good idea to gather your materials together before you get started. And I will warn you, it's really easy to lose track of time when you're playing with some of these kinds of things. So um, be aware, <laughs> um, but it is a lot of fun um, to play with. So um, to start with, let me switch um, cameras and um, we'll start going over. Now I've got some new lighting today and I think it's going to give us a lot better lighting so it doesn't look like we're sitting in the dark. Now I have a very dark brown um, tabletop that I'm trying to find the right covering for it so it doesn't look quite so much like a black hole but I am excited with the new lighting and I think it's going to really help things um, a lot. Um, I don't know if this one interferes. No. Um, part of my issue has been too is that my camera also wants to adjust light levels so you know I want to make it as bright as possible so that you can see what's going on and I think this is going to do a lot for that so anyway to start with what we are using is just your basic now this is a pre gesso canvas we're not stretching our canvases ourselves um, like I had to do when I was in in um, painting classes in, in college and stuff but um, pre stretch canvas and I'm using a 9 by 12 size for my canvas. Um, any art supply store carries canvases. Um, and you can get as close to this size as possible. Not every place carries every size. Um, <coughs> so, um, and I'm turning it over and we're using the back size. So it becomes a bit like a shadow box. So let me then go ahead and show you some of the other stuff that we are going to be using and anything that I'm showing you would be included in the project specific kit which I will have up tomorrow so um, I just ran out of time today so it's um, I'm gonna be using some die cuts now a lot of mixed media people use a lot of die cuts and such but many of them are die cuts that I have no clue where to order them from or get them from um, I may have some of those kinds of die cuts in the future, but many times they're design team people and I don't know where they get them from. So, um, um, or where you can order them from or how you can afford them. So I'm using die cuts made from some um, dies that I already have, but these dies, I'm gonna cut them and include them in um, the kits. And, but I can show you, some of you may have some of these dies because most of them are Tim Holtz dies so um, and I don't have this one um, out but this is just a branch a couple of uh, swirlies now this is from an old Tim Holtz alteration it's called elegant flourishes um, now whether we use all these or not I don't know these are out of some cardstock, um, some leaves, and I cut these for doing this one and then I ended up not using, but, but I may want to use them on uh, this one and I don't have the die out for this, but it also comes with a um, texture plate so you can texture them. Um, then, and these are, the swirls were out of chipboard. These are out of cardstock. And then I've done these out of chipboard. So I have two each of these all these little, let's just fling it around, these little branches and stuff. And these are from Garden Greens. And then I also have a couple of these little branches, these little kind of almost like other evergreen type branches. And that's done from the tattered pine cone and again i should have checked because i'm not really sure i don't need to get the, the, the dies so i haven't um looked to see if those are still available and then i also have some of these 
um, greenery pieces. I still have to clean some of the stuff out of, of on those, and I've got multiples of the greeneries and two of the flowers, three of each of the plants. And these are also out of um, craft card stock. And these are some, this is uh, probably one of my favorite Tim Holtz dies. Um, it's a, there's two different ones. Um, there's this guy, and then I put them all together in one thing. So um, there's it has these guys in it. So I'm using this one, and then I'm using this one and this one. No, this one, not that one. This one. So um, um, and these won't cut through um, chipboard. So so that's um, those are out of the cardstock, and all of these I used in the original. Um, now the dies. On the original one, I used um, this one, which is called Stone Increase, and it's TCW834, and that's what I used for the stone, um, which is kind of hidden back behind, but the stone work that goes around the, the fairy door. And then I also used Lilacs, which the number is eight six TCW860, and that's Lilacs. Now, we can use lilacs. The other option I thought about was using the wisteria, which is TCW845. But I thought wisteria might be kind of cool so it hangs from above, whereas the lilac comes from below. Either one, um, and we'll decide that in the moment when we're doing it. Now, the paper that I'm gonna do the album out of and the paper that I have the cut aparts for are a new paper called um, uh, November Morning, and this one will also be available tomorrow. I still have a few sheets still left to do. Now on this one, I use some cut aparts that will be part of the dark side, and the those cut aparts and the the um, the um, journal cards are going up tomorrow in for those who already have the dark side paper which we used on um, the bed the um, the nightmare bed project so these are from the dark side um, and this door will also be on the dark side and it's really cool as it looks 3d but it is um, from that digital collection so um, this one I use stuff from the dark side this one I'm using it from November morning and it's, so it's a little bit different in terms of coloring. So, but these are some cut aparts that are part of this, um, this collection that I will be using. And this is something my, my latest paper collections will start to have as some cut apart so they can be like, you just cut them out kind of like they're die cuts. So, and we'll be using this, we'll have a purple door on this one using that, um, these cut aparts. Um, just to give you a, a bit of flavor for the papers that I'm going to use on the album that is going to go in with this is um, uh, again called November Morning. It's kind of that edge of fall into winter kind of look. So washed out autumny colors with some blues and greens. So kind of that faded, you know, the colors start to fade. Right now the colors outside here in in Western Washington are just rich, um, except the, tr the leaves, we've had a bit of a storm today, so we've lost a lot of leaves, but it's supposed to be sunny um, tomorrow, so hopefully we'll get to enjoy some of the fall colors. But then after the fall colors, we kind of go into this muted tone, which in and of itself has got some real beautiful colors. It's just, we just start with the drizzly rain. And so, um, but this is kind of that, 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 right where you go from fall into winter with these colors so and again this these this paper will be up sometime tomorrow then we have some that don't have necessarily the foliage on them some subtle pattern ones those leaves that keep the veins but lose their their body to them and then some all over patterns. So I have five more, five more prints to go. Um, 
And then I have, as because everybody knows me, knows I have to have some stripes and that sort of thing. So I'll have three direct geometrics and then I have five um, uh, solid color ish type things to go with this. So, so there's about, usually in my paper collections, there's about 30 sheets in them. They are digital. You print them then yourself on your printer. There's 8 by 10 workable area on them. I don't do 12 by 12s because very limited number of people have a 12 by 12 printer so that you can print this on 8.5 by 11 cardstock. I use index weight cardstock, um, but you can print on any weight of paper that works best for you. So you can go light paper, heavy paper, medium paper, whatever works best for you. Um, so again, this, this collection will be up tomorrow. It's called November Morning and it will have the cut aparts that we will be using on this project um, today. So real quick then, let me show you some of the other things that we're gonna be using is my gathering of goodies, the 3D goodies. Now I tend to, um, those of you who know me, I tend to prefer using um, flowers and elements that I can purchase that are, uh, for want of a better term, silk flowers kind of thing. <coughs> Because I think there you get more for the same money, and there's really limited um, amount of, of, of limited, much more limited resources to get packaged up little flowers. Um, you know, Prima still has them. There's some other smaller places, but um, uh, in fact, the brain, my brain just shut down and said, "Nope, I'm not going to tell you the name of it." Um, they got sold to Floracraft. Um, and they're gone now. Um, and I used to use their flowers all of the time, but they're not available. Um, but this way I can find more unique things. Like these are flowers that have, are made from cork. There's a sh thin layer of cork on them, so they're way cool. Um, here I've got, these are um, some pine cones with sticks, some like evergreen type stuff. Um, instead of the chicken wire, I'm using this really cool, um, ribbon it's kind of a fibery ribbon that's kind of got like frostish stuff on it some frosty looking leaves here um, cotton little pods are big right now so we're going to have a couple of those some sticks um, I've got some rusty bells as we're heading towards the holiday because this would be really pretty for like Thanksgiving time um, as I said some little sticks and some little different size little glittery balls in the color um, some leaves, but we're going to change these leaves out so they're not so bright, so we'll tone those down. Um, so these are just some of the other goodies that are going to be in the project kit. Also, we've got some, some sprays. Now, obviously, these will last far beyond, but um, what I will be doing is, as I do kits, um, if I have a duplicate spray, I will let people know and they can exchange that out um, that sort of thing so but I'm gonna try to have in the kits about four sprays and try not to duplicate any more than I have to um, I also have some liquid acrylic paints that we'll be using and I'm using that to paint um, the die cut elements now one of the things that we will be using as well um, and I'll talk to you about the alternates is I'm gonna be using some of my um, Copic markers which are alcohol ink and they work really good for um, coloring little detail pieces that are done out of um, a modeling paste. So we, I'm going to be using these, but you can use watercolors, you can use distress markers, you can use paint. Um, but the, these alcohol markers work really great, but I'm not going to be including alcohol markers in the kits because it just would make it cost prohibitive for everybody um, using those. So. And again, then I have the um, basic, um, the basics kit. So those of you who have done a lot of this kind of stuff will probably have a lot of those basics, but you may not. Um, and again, um, the kits will always kit include at least two stencils, if not more, depending on what we use. But we're going to be using just two, whether we use those two or the wisteria and the stone, um, and we'll have to decide that. So. Alrighty, so we are Petaloo, that's it. Petaloo is the one, Joy, that um, 
they sold to Floracraft and now they are no longer. So um, I'm not exactly sure. Somewhere in the last three years when I was in um, the black hole of hockey and digging out that um, they disappeared. So, But yeah, it's Petaloo that I was thinking of, Joy. So thank you. All right. Now, the video for doing this will be staying here on YouTube and it will also be available in the archives of my um, website and on the schedule under the day that we're doing this. So this will be under October 25th, 2019. You can go to that date on my schedule and the video for this project will be there. It will also be in the archives under the name of um, the project. So this one will be November morning, um, reverse canvas. So, um, alrighty. So let's go ahead and get rolling. Now, the first thing that I did on doing this one, and we're going to do on this one as well, is we're going to cover our entire back of our canvas and up onto the sides in gesso. We can do a dark one like this is in the black. We could do white. We could actually pull in a color if you want to, because you can add um, paint to your gesso if you want to do that. Um, I like the effect of the black. Um, it kind of fits with the soft neutral colors that I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and use the black on this as well. Um, and I'm using, um, I have a jar of black gesso. Now that my kits I'm going to have will, in order to keep the cost down, will have tubes of gesso. Now. Yeah. They do tend to seal shut a little bit on some of them. I should have brought my jar opener and I'm having a real hard time with my right shoulder. So bear with me while I try to open this and I'm sorry for the noise. Computer out of me. So I try to get it open without having to go downstairs. Now with gesso, a lot of people go, what is gesso? What's the difference between gesso and like acrylic paint? Gesso is like a primer. When you prime your paint, your walls, those of you who have painted walls and if you've primed it first, you find you use a whole lot less of your paint over, instead of not priming it. Now what will happen if we just went straight with the acrylic? Acrylic is gonna seep down into the canvas itself, whereas this one does not want to open. So sorry for the pounds. <laughs> there we go. Gesso has been around for a very, very, very long time, centuries probably. Um, and it does get on things and it chances are pretty slim that it'll wash out. Now I just get my hands messy. I keep a towel that I sacrificed is on my lap all the time so I can wipe my hands out so I don't wipe it on my pants and get the ink on my pants. You can wear gloves if you prefer. Um, but gesso, be aware, probably won't wash out. Now what gesso is going to do versus like I could paint this with acrylic paint. Again, I probably have to do two coats because it would soak into my um, canvas whereas a gesso is going to coat the surface it's also going to get make it a little give it a little bit of stiffening but the best part about it is a matte finish so it's not going to add gloss and it also um, adds a little bit of tooth for things to stick to so um and i just use a nice big brush and uh i want to shove it up into the cracks underneath there as well um, but it also helps to seal the wood now another thing that you can use gesso for so we're using black white's very very common there's also a clear gesso and the basics kit has clear gesso in it as well and what a clear gesso is great for is sealing so if I were going to be doing some mixed media techniques on top of a printed paper whether it's my paper or some other papers it will um, help seal it without adding a sheen to it without adding a surface that will be um, 
repellent to um, other types of paints or media so um, it's just a good primer coat it makes a good sealant um, and it does as I said it dries matte so it doesn't dry sticky some people will find using like a medium as a sealant like a gel medium will find that um, depending on their climate that a medium might not get it might stay a little bit tacky so um, using a clear gesso uh, as a sealant on papers um, is is a, a preference though the gel medium will work so I'm just going to go ahead and paint everything around here now one of the things I meant to do before I got started is in case I want to cram anything down under there I'm going to kind of lift this up so that I can paint a little bit under it because that's what happened to me on the last one I just paint right up and over the the um, staples now there may be a project sometime where I'm doing a reverse canvas that I want to take the staples out and glue it on so I don't have the staples And gesso does also dries pretty quickly, which is nice. You don't have to be super tidy with it. I just try to brush it out so that it's not super thick and then it dries faster. But, um, so, yeah, I mean, in a pinch, if you didn't have it and didn't know where to get it and you wanted to do this, you can use acrylic paints, um, but a primer, a gesso is going to be, act better as that, that primer kind of thing. And you'll be able to have stuff stick to it a little bit better. I've already got paint on my now if there's anybody new here I do ask if you have a question that you have specific for me if you can do it in all caps but only those questions don't yell at me otherwise um, it makes it easier for me to see because I only get to see probably about a 30% or Joy or Lois um, who moderate will spot them and let me know about them so that I make sure I answer questions people have. You can also feel free always to email me at laura at lauradenisondesigns.com if you have other questions while you're watching the videos after the show that sort of thing. I try to get back to people as quickly as I can. little holes in the stretcher bars are hard to get it in there and I also like to cram it down up underneath there okay so yeah, that's probably why I have this thing gets stuck is I don't clean off the edge before I turn it on or put the lid back on.
have water sitting here. So now we gotta let this dry, speed it up a little. Yeah, one of the things too, yes, is you is is Deborah saying she buys she buys some canvases that she finds maybe at uh, thrift stores that sort of thing, and you can paint over old stuff that's on there, than buying new can canvases. Yeah, so you can paint over. So if you have one that you're like going, oh God, I really screwed this one up. You can just paint over it. <laughs> or if you have some old, or you, like I said, finding some old ones at thrift stores like, um, or Goodwill or something like that, like Deborah saying, um, you can then just paint over them. Because that's the other thing with gesso is it's, it's especially the white, um, it's very opaque versus like white acrylic, you'd have to do multiple coats to cover it. But um, with gesso, you can paint right over it. So. Um, yeah, Joy, uh, previous, previously used canvases are called ugly paintings. Ugly old paintings. <laughs> so let's get this dry. See, and this is, this is the drying time stuff that can add to our time, class time. Okay, that's relatively dry because now I want to give it a bit of a spray just to give it some some sparkle and depth. So this is where I take my towel and just lay it on here to catch the overspray. So I'm going to use a couple, I'm going to use a purple and kind of a, this one is kind of a greenish purple. So I'm using Ethereal Emerald and uh, French Lilac Violet. Now, I tend to like to use um, the Lindy sprays. A, they've got five gabillion colors. Um, very few problems with the bottles hanging up. And what I love about them, for shipping and kits and stuff, they are totally the way to go, is that they are dry and they ship dry, so I don't have to worry about them leaking in your kit. And you just add water. And then I'm just going to give it some spritz. It's not really going to show much. And I'm mainly focusing more to the top because the bottom part's going to get covered over. I like having those big blobs of color every once in a while because it adds some extra little shimmer. Um, I'll give it a little bit of a dry in between. So that kind of has a bronzy ish tone, bronzy browny type of tone to it. So go ahead and dry that a bit. And then add the lilac. Now it's not like a, you know, it's kind of splappy. So it's not like an airbrush effect where it's an all over. And I kind of like that drippy, sploppy kind of look to it. So you can see where it's got some big areas of the paint there. So this is adding a little bit of depth. One of the things with doing these kinds of projects is what gives it the richness. And when you look at those, there's a million YouTube videos out um, on, on mixed media, just like there is with, with um, uh, mini albums and that sort of thing, is that the more layers it gives, <laughs> well, you may watch something and go, she just covered over that entire thing that she'd spent all this time on. But with more layers on it, then you get, um, it gives that depth and that sort of thing. So. so there it's got some kind of bronzy tones and purpley tones. So that's just going to give us some, some added extra little layers in there. Okay, so now we have to decide. I'm going to go ahead and cut out my 
door so we can kind of plan placement and that sort of thing. Now I know Lois would prefer I use the blue door that comes with the um, the the dark side papers, but is purple. It's it's got some blue tones in it. Lois, Lois, it looks blue, but this whole canvas is going to come out feeling much more blue than the other one, the sample one. So. So and that's going to be approximately down in there. So if I decide I'm going to use these, they, they'll tuck in a little bit behind there. So I could use those and then I'll have my, my um, stone kind of come up and over. Or we can go ahead and use the wisteria. Now I have been in love with wisteria since I went, because I went to, um, did my undergraduate school down in um, the Bay Area at California College of Arts and Crafts. And it was just um, south of UC Berkeley. It was at the other end of College um, Avenue on UC Berkeley, uh, from UC Berkeley. And I, um, we would go over to Berkeley a lot. And there's some houses that have the most stunning, stunning um, wisteria. And I just, I fell in love with wisteria at that point. So we can have the wisteria that's kind of hanging down and we still have our stone or we can have our lilacs popping up. So you like wisteria or do we like the lilacs? I'm letting you guys decide. Well, I'm, they're going to be kind of bluish toned already, kind of violet -y, blue -y toned already, Lois. So, okay, we got two wisterias. Okay, so it is wisteria. We're going to go with wisteria. So the wisteria will be what is included in the kits. Um, so I'm going to kind of tuck it more over to this side so I don't run into my door as much. Um, now I am going to be using um, light and fluffy modeling paste on this one. Um, this is my favorite modeling paste ever. Of, I've tried five different, five billion different kinds of modeling paste. I absolutely love, love this stuff. Now one of the things I want to be clear about is I am on um, TCW's, the Crafters Workshop's design team. I do, just like I did with Graphic 45, I do get free product from them. And so for FCC rules, I have to tell you that I have received um, product from them for free. But you also know me well enough, those of you been around, know I'm not going to promote something that I don't like. So if I didn't like this, I just wouldn't use it. I'd use something else. Um, so, because um, I'm, I'm never going to be one who's going to tell you to use something when behind the scenes I use something else or if I didn't like it I I just I wouldn't use it you know there's other products that I get sent that I don't use so um, but I love this stuff I absolutely love this stuff so um, and this this has a consistency it's like whipped um, frosting um, and it's lightweight it doesn't weigh a ton um, and it has just a really crisp um, a Christmas to crispness to it for the um, uh, the stenciling. It doesn't mush out at all. It stays crisp, but it is very stark white, um, and so you can always mix some color in with it. But that will change the consistency a bit. So, but um, and I apply it with a palette knife, and I just take a scoop of it, and we're just going to scrape it over the top. 
you just you don't need a super thick layer um, just want to make sure you cover over all the parts and you can feel free to scrape a little bit once you get started if your stencil is not going to move you can kind of see how I'm getting a nice consistent layer you just don't want to go off the edge of your stencil because that will show so you just want to make sure I've got everything as you can see all of my the little black holes are covered over and I do use a lot of paper towels and baby wipes clean that off any modeling paste or mediums I clean off my stencils um, pretty much immediately I don't like to leave those on there because you can't get them off so then we're just gonna pop this up which is a little tricky because I got it tucked underneath so try to do it without messing it up too much but see how nice and crisp that gives the image it's just like it's perfect so while that has to dry for a few minutes anyway I'm just gonna do a, a real basic cleaning of this on top of my paper towel with a baby wipe baby wipes are a, a must um, have when you're playing with messy products that off now paint paint I don't clean off stencils as you saw with the lilacs so I originally had done them with paint and I didn't like how it looked so I switched it but so I don't clean the paint off so I've got that all cleaned off so my wisteria is cleaned off I could probably use this paper towel for something else it's a wet one for something else too let's go ahead and get this dry now you wa don't want to hold your heat source in a specific spot while you're you want to keep it really moving when you're drying excuse it, either modeling paste or um, the um, any mediums and stuff because they can bubble so you don't want to get let it get too hot um, what would you say is the difference between modeling paste and texture paste modeling paste um, and now this one's a specialty modeling paste modeling paste has a bit of a grit to it has some body to it Whereas a texture paste usually has texture. It has some grit in it. It has um, something that makes it much more textury. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more because we are going to be using some modeling paste and I am going to be adding some goop, in, some sand and crap into it. Sorry, don't mean to call it crap, but I'm going to be adding some stuff to turn it into a texture paste and I can explain it better at that point. Um, now a gel versus a modeling paste is a gel is much more of a trans give a translucency um, a, a gel medium is added to um, um, is was originally designed to be added to um, paints to give them some some uh, more body and texture um, so a gel and a medium is different than a modeling paste um, a paste is going to hold its shape a little bit better than like a gel would, like this is. And then a texture paste, again, I'm going to explain that here in just a few minutes. Yeah, if you have like a cake pan, a big flat cake pan that you can put with water and you have room on a table, side table, um, I have, I many times have done that and where I'm using a lot of stencils and then you can just throw your stencil into that water so it stays um, moist until you're ready to clean it. Or like I did the other day, I wrapped something, uh, it was a sponge, I wrapped it in a baby wipe and it's so it stays damp until I'm ready to, um, to clean it. So this is getting close to dry okay it's still it's pretty much it's dry to the touch it's still a little soft but I'm gonna dry it a little bit more because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit more of the the bronzy spray that I had used before 
and I'm going to spray over this a little bit, just just a little bit to give it just some to take away the super brightness. So just to throw a little bit of extra on there. Best scissors for fussy cutting. My favorite for fussy cutting scissors. See I did with my okay. Um, this is Martha Stewart, but um, there's other ones that use them. I like these little spring-loaded ones. They work really well for my hands. Um, my hands don't get as tired. They're super sharp. Get in a little teeny tiny little areas. Because fussy cutting using scissors that have the fingers, um, I find it's hard on my hands, whereas I like these kind. So the spring-loaded ones, they've got super sharp little points, that kind of thing. So. One thing nice too with by doing these YouTube lives versus the Ustreams, which we did for so many years, is the um, chat, and I I have it to where the chat is available, so you can watch the chat while you're watching the show and see what the questions come up. So it's not just like me randomly just talking. So okay, so let's pretty much dry, let it cool for just a sec. So it's a little bit cooler. So, and then this is the point where I'm using my um, Copic markers, which I've got all these Copic markers that I've bought over the years and I don't use them that often. Um, Copic markers are an alcohol ink. You could also use distress markers. Those would work as well. Those are a water-based ink. So just be aware of that when you go to put other media on top of them. That is, if it has wet, it is going to smear it. You could use alcohol inks with a paintbrush and paint these. You can use um, the Lindy sprays to paint these. You could use watercolors to paint these. Um, you could even use acrylic paints. You just want to be real careful to hit just the, the parts that's stenciled on because it, it will show. Whereas these are so transparent on the black, they're not going um, to show. So. so here I've got like my lightest tone and I, I like to use the brush tip. So I'm just going to be, and I don't have to be as as, as careful because it's not really going to show on the black, but I do want to make sure that I'm covering over. Now I'm being a little bit careful on this just because um, this stuff, this modeling paste, the light and fluffy, does tend to, it dries to the touch on the top, but it's not always dry all the way down and when you push on it a little bit, if it's not completely dry, it will um, move around on you because it is thick. So I just, if you're not completely dry yet, which this is this is for the most part dry, but not 100%. It's not like overnight type of dry. So I just want to be real careful. So I'm just adding some pale, soft color. It's probably hard to see on camera for the, the ends, and then I'll get into darker tones as I go up. And as is always with um, any kind of alcohol ink, you can layer on top of it and add more color. And I don't have to be with these. I don't have to be careful about that I'm painting over the black in the background because the alcohol ink's not really going to show up against on that black background. And like I said too, she, I can layer on top of it. So if I wanted to make this a little more blue for Lois, I could. So then I'm going to go to the, my next, whoops, I like the brush tip. My next color and I can kind of blend in. Now I didn't have the bluey violet that I really wanted to do this. So we're going to make these a little bit more of the purpley tone. But I can go back over it with some light blue on the side. And so this makes it easier to get a you know a gradation of color using these pens or watercolors or something like that on here. Um, any kind of transparent kind of color, um, rather than adding paint and trying to do a variation or, or a gradation of color using you know the the paste itself. I could have done like a light blue and then added purple on top of it, 
possibly added that to my my paste but I have to justify having all these pens somehow so now we go to a darker color so I'm just graduating the tone Just coloring those. It's a real quick and easy way to add the color. Now I would have to be a lot more careful if I did this with a light or white background. Alrighty, so then I want to add some green for my leaves up here. And I'll hold this up here in just a second once I get this all colored. But again, distress markers would work as well. I just would potentially do maybe a coating, a clear coating of like a, the clear gesso over the top or some other way of sealing the distress markers because we're going to be doing some wet stuff over the top. So I want a little bit of darker green. Just to Add some depth. A little bit of brown tones in a few places. The tips. Let me grab a light blue just so I can throw some. Some blue in there for Lois, just to give it just some other little tones up towards the, so it's less pink. Just kind of randomly splotch on some of this. You can see I'm just kind of randomly tossing a, this blue tone in there. Not getting too, too much, too much. Alright, so that gives me my wisteria all colored. See how quick and easy that was? Alrighty. So that has our wisteria all good to go. So next we're getting our we're getting out our stone increase, which I'm going to use for my stones. Now with the stone increase, for you know obvious reasons, bigger stones at the bottom going up to smaller stones, and we're going to use that. And I'm going to see if I have my little guy in there because he's going to pop up a little too so he's going to be up a little ways so I want him at the bottom I don't want it tucking underneath so I'm going to stay a little bit lower down over here and as I come up and around where that is so I can take this is my placement so just with a light pencil line I can draw where my door is going to be. It's really faint. You can barely see the line there. But that way, when I'm putting my stone in, I make sure I get kind of up and over that point, and then I'll bring it down lower. So I'm ready now to mix up some of my, my stuff for my... Um, I'm going to grab something. This is where having, oh, I can grab a paper. Here. This is going to grab some paper, but it's going to work a lot. Um, this is where I'm just going to use some foam paper plate type things um, to mix my stuff up with. Um, 
So this is where I'm going to be using some modeling paste and some sand. So I've got some modeling paste here. Now the modeling paste, it's by comparison to the um, uh, the stuff that I just used, the light and fluffy modeling paste. This stuff has it's a lot. It's more like dried glue. It's very pasty feeling. Um, as you can see, it's not as soft. It doesn't have that. It's not that whipped feeling. Whereas the other one has that whipped look to it. Whereas this is more um, kind of goopy, for want of a better term. Because you can see see how it kind of holds those. I can make it come up to a peak and it'll hold that peak to it'll bend over but see how it it has it will hold a peak it has more it's stiffer I was trying to look for the right word it's got a stiffer consistency to it now a texture paste which I, I don't have in the kit I don't have a specific texture paste because I'm creating my own texture you know you can buy paste that have different grits of sand, you know, all sorts of stuff in them. But I find rather than having 14 different kinds of texture pastes, I can just create the same thing by adding some sand to it and giving it that texture. I mean, I have texture paste. Let me show you a couple of them here. So that you know what I'm talking about. This is this is a golden one. This one's got pumice type stuff in it. So so this is has this is getting kind of dried up because I don't use it. So you can just hear it. It's you can see how it's got like sand in it to give it texture. So you know you can you you can buy these. Or you can just add sand to what you've already got. Um, Prima's got these stone effect paste that have different kinds of stone stuff in them. This one's like concrete, so it's gray. And it's got... I'm going to use these. <laughs> oh, they were sealed up. But I used one of them. I haven't used that one either. So you can add color to it. This one's limestone. Well, see, I haven't even used these yet. But they do, they have texture. You can see the little grits and crumblies in them. Um, so, you know, you can buy all sorts of texture stuff, but it's a lot cheaper to buy just craft sand. And I'm just going to add, and this is you're gonna have you know some bags of the sand you don't need a lot start with a little you can always add more and we're just gonna mix it in to give us the texture you can you can use yeah you can put just about anything you want in there you can add dirt to it if you want to try to get the sand in there come on I want a little bit more in there, and then I'm going to also add some color to it. This is kind of a pale grayish tone with the one that this, but they also, um, uh, Crafters Workshop has um, modeling paste in all sorts of, they have it in black, they have it in white, they have it in metallic. This is just the standard one. So you can see now that it's that rather than being so gummy, now it has, let's smooth it out. It has a texture now to it that's it's because it's got the sands in there. So it's giving it a gritty texture, more of a stone-like texture. Now I want to add <coughs> a little bit of color um, to it to give it a little bit. I can spray some color on there. I can add some paint color um, to it. 
Effie's all organized, and now I can't find it. Oh, come on. What is it doing? Can I set, leave it setting up somewhere? There it is. Okay, so I'm just going to add a couple of drops of gray paint to it. It is gray, so yeah. Now that is going to, to, you know, any liquid you add is going to um, change the viscosity or the thickness. So you don't want to add a lot. And I am going to be painting over. So I want to keep it a pale gray. Mix it up. A little bit of variation is fine. Okay, that's about the consistency I want. And that's probably about enough. It's hard to guess. You can always mix more, and it's, if it's not perfect, guess what? It's no big deal. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get right down into the corner with that. But I'm going to turn because it's easier to work from this way. So this is the bottom. So I want the big ones down at the bottom. But I also have to remember my doors in there so I don't have to come over too far. So I don't have to cover everything over. I do want to get down in the corner with that. And I want it to be a little bit thicker than say what I did with the the um, modeling, the soft, light and fluffy stuff. So I uh, want to leave it on there a little bit thicker. Okay, here's my, my door. So I can kind of come up this way. Not too far, much over the, but I want to stop this down here so I don't have to go all the way. I'm not going all the way up into here because I want my stones to kind of be like a, a hump. So I'm going to turn that back around. So I'm going to do this up above here without going over the edge of my stencil. So about right there. Make sure holding my door up above. I can use a little bit more down here. But I don't need to do it up underneath the door. So you can see how nice and thick that is. And then I'll lift my stencil up. And now it gives me kind of a stone like look to it. So I need to do some over in here. So, and it doesn't really matter if it gets a little bit on it. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to hold it up a little bit. I don't know where the intersect there. I just don't want it to fall down into the other and mess it up. But if it does, it just it's what nature does. You know, rocks fall on each other and stuff like that. I think that's going to cover over where my door goes. It didn't have much over here on this side. But you know what? If things get a little messy, I got some on the edge, it doesn't matter. It's not going to really show. So. There's my kind of stone stuff. Maybe tap that, some of that stuff down. Once it's a little drier, I can tap that a down a little bit. And I will again grab, I'll grab two of these since I don't get to go wash this out right now. I'll just take and put it in between two wet. It stays wet, and then I'm going to take some of this and also a little bit of 
onto my sides down here along the bottom. All that I got here. You could stencil this on or you can just smear it on like I am, just giving it some texture. Now it looks like I could use a little bit more, so we're going to mix up a little bit more. So you can see, hey, it happens. That's not the right one. That's the one that's already textured. See, I have a nice little tray that I'm now keeping everything that's in the kit that you guys are getting there so that I don't grab stuff that you guys don't necessarily have. Probably about that much. Add a little bit of sand to it. Not a lot. As I said, your sand will come in a little bag. I'm going to buy a big old huge jar of it. Now, if I had a, if I were doing this with a metal. I could scrape this up a little bit better, but because I'm doing it with a plastic palette knife, it bends. That's going to come out a little bit darker gray, but that's okay. Maybe I'll just take this guy out from here. Give it some kind of that stone look along there. We'll lift that up because I'm mainly wanting the texture. See, you don't have to be tidy. That's what I love about it, so we can be messy. It's like being a kid again and getting to play. do with this is I'm going to take a little bit of my light and fluffy stuff. I'm going to add to it to make some textury stuff for up above. I just didn't want to get any of that other stuff on there. Now I did in these kits, you will be getting a large one of the light and fluffy because it's so much my favorite. So I'm going to mix this in a little bit. And don't be afraid to play with this kind of thing. I'm going to mix it in just to extend it a little bit. And I also want it a little bit lighter because I'm going to put it up around here just to add some texture up there. And we'll paint over it in black. But I'm also going to add some. Um, these are little art stones. They're a little like bead-like. Whoops. Little stone kind of. They're real lightweight. They're kind of like little micro beads. I don't know what they're made out of. I've been playing it. I'm gonna dump this on there. I'm just gonna I want this to have a little bit even more texture. So I can mix those in too. So I'm just gonna take and put some of this up here just to give this some texture as well, but we're gonna paint over it. We're not gonna have it be gray. See, 
See, there's no wrong way of doing this. We're just adding some texture to it. So, all right. So then let's set this aside because we're going to let this dry just a tad while I clean up some of this because some of this stuff is, this is critical to clean. Or you do not want your texture paste and that sort of thing drying on your stencils because you won't be able to get it off very easily afterwards. Got the most of it off, but I'm going to wrap it with a. Uh, this has got that gel on it too, so but I'm going to just have it be with that over it, set that aside so after the show's over I can clean that up. And get my hands up just a bit. So clean off my palette knife. One thing nice this stuff does is it forces you every once in a while to just get up and keep the blood pumping by going in and cleaning off stuff. Now this, by doing it on a toss, I can now throw that away. Where are we at for time? We're good. Yeah, the art stones come in all sorts of sizes from those really mini tiny ones, which is what I use. Um, up to their, like, the larger ones are, like, almost, like, quarter, eighth of an inch to quarter of an inch. Um, but I like the little ones. So now we're going to let this dry. And as this dries, these little peaks that I have here, I can tap those down so my little stones there aren't sharp. Gentle, gentle, gentle. <laughs> You gotta wait till it's got just kind of a skin on top. This is where it's at a good point place that you can just go stop and go get something to eat or something, but we're going to push it and dry it. And we're almost done with the messy part, so... Now this will be dry enough that we can do some stuff on it here in a few minutes, but 
very carefully. But this is something you might want to let dry for a longer time, typically. We're kind of forcing the issue by, by, um, using my heat tool to dry. Just so back out again, we just stuck up. Okay. That's what's causing the problem is that seal. So I'm just going to do my gesso right over. I'm going to be very gentle with how I'm doing this because it would be better if this were dry. Just over this part I did up at the top. This is a super soft brush so that it'll go down in those nooks and crannies without munching it too much. just on this upper part that I'm doing this. The lower part's going to get painted with our sprays and stuff to look more like stone. And then we'll enhance this texture here in just a bit with some of our other goodies. Just wanted to give it kind of that kind of Cool textury feel. I gotta work on this jar, clean it up. All right, so there we got that all. So that's gonna dry. Let me get this a little bit drier down here. All right, so then I'm going to bring in my sprays again. Now I'm using, I'm not going to pull the purple one in. Um, the first two I use, I'm going to use a brown and a green. And this, and I also want to use a brush. Now I'm going to take the lids out of these after I shake them. Pounding sprays that have a um, the sparkly stuff in the bottom helps break that loose rather than just shaking it because that just puts a lot of air. If you pound on it, see it's got all that in the bottom. It'll help break that loose to mix in. See, some of these have been sitting for a while, so it's going to take a little bit. Alright, 
So that's kind of just a brown, coppery brown color. Kind of a olive -y, a little bit of olive -y kind of green. So then I'm going to take a oh, medium, not a real heavy big brush. And I'm just going to be brushing this on here. So I'm using it kind of like it's a paint. It's got the gray in there, so the gray will show through as well. You can also use watercolors if you don't want the shimmer, or you don't shake it up as much, and then you don't get the shimmer as much. But, you know, this is a fairy house, after all, so having a little shimmer and sparkle is not a bad thing. Just have to be super gentle painting this when this stuff is still as wet as it is, because it could muck it up a bit. I thought this was going to be a lot greener than it is, so... It tested it out a little bit more. It's working. I like it letting the gold kind of go in between. It's kind of like the mortar in between the stones. And there's no super specific you gotta you know it's 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 very forgiving is what I love about doing this kind of stuff is if it's not perfect nobody knows the difference and it still looks really cool <laughs> you don't have to follow any specific rules so now we got this little kind of coppery tone to add some more brownness Blend it a little bit. Leave some part of those that are just the grayish. Not so much. Maybe up at this top edge I have less of the coppery tone. Just giving it kind of a stonish feel. This really also helps accentuate the texture that you added into the modeling paste to give it that stonish feel. So I think I might add in some of the, the greenish purpley stuff that we used at the very start. This has got more of the olive tone. I probably should brush my wash my brush out a little bit, but I didn't. Yeah, this just gives us that kind of all of these tone to it. And that gives us, and then after we dry it a little bit as well, so we can always add some more onto it as well in spots but that gives us kind of that stonish look this video will be available here um, as some somebody's having to leave it and they like the video so that they can come back to it um, it'll be here on my website or here on my channel It'll also be over on my website at Laura Dennison Design. So, you know, whatever method works for you. Since we have about half an hour still to go, we're going to get a lot of this messy stuff done. And then what we'll do is I think we will go ahead and do a Sunday afternoon class and finish up putting the foliage and 
all of that so we'll get this done and I'll show you painting the um, the the leaves and stuff and that sort of thing so but that way this can have a good dry You can see how we're getting, you know, it's got like runs into the crack, so it's kind of like the mortar. Oops, mortar. And then you can see up here as this is drying the texture, adding that texture to it. So it's kind of got that encrusted feel to it. And then it's always a good idea to remember which <laughs> which lid goes to which. Um, and I'm probably going to tweak out this um, the Pirates Plunder Gold. It's it's more gold than I want. I wanted something a little more green, so um, I won't use that one. I'll get a more green tone for the um, in the sprays that go with that kit. I didn't have an opportunity to check it out as closely as I wanted to, so. Oh, almost close. So once that is all dry, and it's it's pretty close, there's still some spots that are wet. And so this guy is going to go right in there. So my stone goes up right around the door like I wanted it to. So that's where that's all, that's going to fall in there like so. And I like how the purples and the purples, and then we'll have some neutrally tones coming out here. So here up on this, let me just see if I can dry this a little bit more so that we can add some... Coloring to give it a little bit of, or add some enhancement to make that stand out. Now, as you can see from the original one, a lot of this stuff on this frame, you know, you got a little bit of the texture showing through here, but I did cover a lot of it with, you know, foliage. And that sort of thing so you don't always see all of that here you can see a little bit of the stone coming over here um, so you know not everything is always going to completely show now one of the other um, things that I didn't get to show when I showed the kit the other day for the primary kit the basic kit is the um, one of the the vintage silk wax um, which is the only wax I didn't have and it's kind of a um, creamy kind of color. Now I tend to put the wax on. You can put it on with a brush. I like to do it with just my finger. I can control it. So I'm just dabbing a little onto my finger and then kind of just going over it kind of like you're dry brushing it. And all that's doing is bringing out that texture a little bit. Very, you're not putting really any pressure on your finger. 
until your fingers almost, but in the very beginning, you're barely, it's just like you're running your finger just over the top of it just to give. I don't like dry brushing with your fingers, so it's like finger brushing. Always go with just a little bit. You can always add more. It's harder to make it go away. You see, it stays dark. I'm not really adding metallic. It's more of a pearl type. But that just enhances. It kind of just barely and gives just a hint. So you can see the texture a little bit better. Yeah, the stuff does smell good. <laughs> So that gives you this that little bit of textury type of thing. Now, um, with my door, I'm gonna take and attach it to a piece of light wood chipboard. Figure out where this go. Where did my glue go? Now, if I were going to do anything on to the top of this, where I was concerned about the ink on the door, um, I would cover this with some clear gesso. But I'm not really going to be doing anything other than gluing some stuff near it or using distress on it. So um, it doesn't it doesn't need to be coated. If you want to add some paint stuff to it, that sort of thing, then you would want to. Um, coat it and seal it. I just want to give it a little bit of some body. I'm using vintage photo. If you want to use a different color, by all means. But those of you who know me, you know I use vintage photo a lot. And then I've been doing this a lot lately too, is I'm using my archival black soot. It's just on the edge just to give it a more of a defined edge. Not really bring it into the not um, trying to fade it in, I'm just doing an edge. Drawing yourself on me. So now we're going to set our door in there. And I want it, my door to be have a little bit of height to it. Now you can set the height up using some uh, foam dots. It takes a lot of them to do that. You can use some chipboard, a couple layers of chipboard, a couple layers of cardboard. So if you have some old shipping boxes, I'm going to go whack a piece off of this box, a box that I have sitting here. I have a shelf I'm putting up, so it's, I don't need the box.
So I can take some pieces of this. under the back. And it gives it about a quarter of an inch depth. Alright, so I can take my door where it's got my. Let's see, then it sits up a little bit, which is why I didn't want it tucked under when I was measuring. That way we can have some of our foliage coming out from behind it. Stick him down. So we got our door in, we got our wisteria, we've got our, our stones and stuff for it. So now we're ready to start playing with some of the other stuff that we're going to create layers with. And one of the things, um, I had the chicken wire on the other one, um, and getting the clean chicken wire um, is a little bit more challenging, and this stuff fit more with what I was doing on this one anyway. So this is some just ribbon. It's kind of like a netting that it's got, so it's been paint, had some paint on it. It's got some, um, stuff added to it, some glitter and stuff on it, so it's kind of really cool stuff. So we'll be able to just glue this on there, so we'll be able to have some stuff underneath, and this will give it some cool texture down one side that will also be able to give us some layering like we've done on the original one. So on the original one, I put some of my foliage underneath this chicken wire. So see, you can see some of it's underneath, and then I put the chicken wire down, and then it gives me another layer of depth on there, which is what this will do. So we'll be able to put some of the stuff underneath. Now this is pretty wide. This is a lot narrower, so um, it won't cover as much because it's a little denser, so it's about half the width, which works great because um, I wouldn't want it that dense going halfway across um, the... Um, the whole thing. So what I want to do next though is to be painting some of our chipboard and stuff so that we can kind of figure out how this is all going to lay out. But I'm liking how this is coming together. Is this making sense? Does anybody have any questions at this point? So on my chipboards. I'm not going to paint the swirlies yet because I'm going to do those probably um, when when I decide what color. And I, I don't know that I'm necessarily going to use, I don't know that I'm going to use these. So we'll wait on those. But I know I want to use the foliage. And I'm going to do one one way and one the other way so that they're mirrored. Same with those little green guys. And then we'll come back some of these. I'm going to wait on the these leaves too because I'm going to do something different to these leaves. And I'm also, I'll show you when we're ready to start doing this stuff. Um, or I might do that. How much time do we still have? We have 15 minutes. So I'm going to do these leaves and these leaves and show you how to take these so that they're not so yellow because I want to tone these down. So on Sunday, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to these leaves with some clear gesso and what I'm going to do with these leaves with some gesso to turn them into um, more tonal type of things. But 
let's just get work on getting some of these all um, painted and then they can sit and dry and I don't have to blast them around. Turn at least one of these, each of these over. So pop out the parts that didn't pop out before. And as I said, all the die cuts that I'm using right here today um, will be included in those kits. So. All right, so I've got several shades of just green liquid acrylic. I'm doing a little bit icier green and then an olive tone and then a lighter olive tone. So those are the colors that I'm going to be using. And I'm just going to be painting these. I'm just going to paint one side. I don't have to completely coat it at this point because I'm going to be adding other color to it as well. Maybe more towards the center on these. I should have poured some of this stuff out. A lot easier. Once I make my life harder by just trying to mitigate the mess, but I'm too tidy is my problem. So like so I was saying the other day is I'm just I'm a tidy crafter. Now these, I'm going to totally coat because these I want to be that kind of icy green. So what's that color? Now I'm going to bring the darker olive in. I'm just kind of dabbering it on to cover over the spots. And I just give some variation in tones. You just don't want them to be, you know, one note, so to speak. One kind of color. You just kind of want to blend it all together a little bit. So I don't want to cover over all the green. I just want to cover back over the chip that I left out. Okay, so now I'm going to take this darker green. And do a lot of it onto here.
So I'm going to add some lighter green to these guys. And all of these will get some, some inking done on them as well. Now I, you can do this on top of like a, a non-stick. This is a Ken Oliver mat and I'm going to get some of these and carry them um, in my shop. They are the coolest mats. Um, I like them better than the Ranger one. But I'm going to carry this size. They also come in a, a giant economy size too, but I'm going to stay with this smaller size. This is a lighter green. So you just kind of pounce your brush off a little bit. Just add a little bit more green. Not a lot. Just hitting highlights. It's more like where the sun is hitting the leaves than the color itself. on these leaves too. Not a lot. I'm not going to do anything on those. Just very tip tops. Very sploppy on these guys. gives us those oh, and I still need to do those guys um these guys I'm gonna do the the olives and stuff and then we'll do some color on that and I think we'll save these and do these when we do the leaves because I want to add that kind of blue violet to these guys as well so um I'm gonna save these and do these with the leaves on Sunday um, so that these guys are all good to go dry them all. Alrighty, so, and this is where we're going to end for today. Um, just because I have something going on here right away that I thought was at 7 and it starts at 6. Um, so, um, so, this will give us all of our pieces and parts and then on Sunday we're actually going to go ahead and put together um, our, our, um, our canvas. Um, so coming up tomorrow, I will be putting up the November morning paper, which has got the cut aparts and it's got the purple door in it. I will be putting up the kits for this, um, um, that are specific that's got the sprays the paints um, It's got the sprays the paints all the die cuts the flowers that I showed you and all of that um, This ribbon it's got the canvas all of that is in it is in the kit now I'm gonna have the papers be separate in case you choose you want to use your own papers or um, um, Other papers or if you don't want to make the album that goes with it um, uh, I may just have the cut apart sheets available as well. So I, I'll have the full papers available that will include the cut apart sheets and the door, but I will also have it to where you can just purchase just the two cut apart sheets with the door. So if you only want to make the canvas, so I have the papers separate. If you want to make the album that's going to go with it, that's going to fit in the box back behind. Um, you can get the full set and it's got everything in it. So if you buy the full set of papers, do not buy the door and cut aparts 
that are separate. You'll need to put, you'll have them all together. So those will go up tomorrow. Um, the, um, it'll have, like I said, I have all the die cuts. So it'll have the two stencils, um, the four sprays. It'll have four colors of the paint. It'll have all the die cuts that you've seen here. Um, it will have um, this ribbon and then all of the goodies here, the foliage goodies that we're going to be using as well. So that will all be in the project kit. I already have up the mixed media basics kit that has all the mediums, the paste, um, the waxes, the little stones, the sand, all of that that we'll be using on many projects. So all of that stuff will be available as soon as all the materials come in. They'll all get ordered, um, should be ordered Monday, Tuesday of next week. Um, as soon as everything arrives, they will be shipping out. Um, there's no, obviously there's no pattern. The videos, excuse me, will be available. Um, but the, the feel of this is going to be very similar it's mainly the colors that are different because all of the elements the flowers are a little bit different but all the elements are the same so it's going to have this same feel um i'm just increasing it on the side so it'll have the chipboard the kits project kits will also include the chipboard for making this into the box as well as the paper um for making the um the album as well and you'll have access to the album because we're using the um, there's not a written tutorial for that because it's a freebie pattern that we are working on currently on our Wednesday shows um, called the double envelope and so we'll be using the double envelope so the kits will include the envelopes that's what and the cardstock needed to do that so does anybody have any other questions at all these are all dry so I can pick them all up. Um, thank you as always to Joy and to Lois for being a moderator for me. I always appreciate their assistance so much. Um, so you can see color wise this is going to start I'm going to start throwing some of that color in there getting that feel for it and then it's going to have Kind of rusty colored flowers. Pop it off of that. So you can start having the, you can get a feel for the colors of it. A couple of these guys in there. We'll also have some of these kind of leaves coming in as well, so you'll be able to start getting a feel for the coloring of it. Okay, so some of these guys will tuck back behind the door. Then we have the kind of these frosty little leaves coming in, so you can get a feel for kind of what the coloring is going to be coming together. For this one it's a little bit different a little little more subdued in terms of the coloring um, we also have some little stick pieces and these little get these little pine cones off and those will get added in There's some of these little evergreen pieces in there so it's gonna be and some little sparkly sparkly little balls in places you know those are little magic parts so um be adding adding that to it and then with the pops of the purple in there i think it's going to be a really really lovely piece so and again videos available here on youtube for free viewing over on my website also for free viewing so, um, and we'll continue this through and it'll be done on Sunday. So, um, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a shout and we're going to, um, keep moving it forward with this sort of thing. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you to all of you who have joined me. Those of you that, that are new, 
those that of you have, that have been around for a while, um, it's exciting having um, you all join me here in my studio. And I do greatly appreciate you taking time um, out of your lives and joining me here. So uh, everybody have an amazing weekend. And we'll be at the same time on Sunday at 4 o'clock, um, 4 to 6 um, Pacific time on Sunday then to finish this up. Um, my typical shows, uh, live shows, are on Wednesdays. Um, sometimes they're at 3 in the afternoon my time. Sometimes they're at 10. Um, and the schedule is over on uh, my um, website under the schedule button. Um, won't always know what we're going to work on. <laughs> we I have been working on an album that I'm going to switch it over to you, um, the papers that we're using on this one. So it'll be the album that fits into this one. So... Um, just going to go play in the forest a little bit more with our little fairies and we folk. My favorite thing um, to do. So, alrighty guys. Everybody have a great weekend. And we will see you then on Sunday. So, peace out. Love you bunches. Bye for now. Yeah, um, just sec. Oops. I don't know. I'm still broadcasting. Hang on. Oh.